Now, the number of young people in the UK not in education, employment or training, sometimes called NEET, has risen in the past year, according to the latest ONS figures. Data published this week shows more than 870,000 16 to 24 year olds in the UK are not working or studying. Now, that's a rise of 74,000 compared to last year. It means around 12 percent of young people in the UK are not currently earning or learning. Well, today, the Youth Futures Foundation, which aims to reduce youth unemployment in England, has published a report looking at employment and education. Of the 2,500 young people they surveyed, more than 40% said a lack of skills or training was the biggest barrier to entering the workforce. Our education correspondent, Elaine Dunkley, has been speaking to young people about their experiences. This is the Warren Centre in Hull a place where young people who feel alone can come together. What have been some of the challenges? What have been I met Skylar. Like many who come here, she's classed as neat, not in education, employment or training. When people go into care, um, you, get, you get bullied and people think that it's your fault. Being taken into care at the age of 13 was traumatic. Ten years on, she's struggling to get her life on track. I didn't get the GCSEs I wanted to. What would be your absolute dream, do you think? To be able to get on with my life without, being, without having these struggles, without having the flashbacks of the trauma I've had in the past, just being able to engage with people normally. Aaron and his sister Shakira have also had a difficult upbringing. Waiting for mental health support has meant dropping out of college and struggling to hold down a job. Because I've been going through a hell of a lot, through thick and thin, like mental health wars and that. Here, there is support for young people to gain skills to help them get a job. So, Aaron, how have you been getting on with job searches? And so far, Aaron uh, has had no luck. About 15, maybe 20 at least. What, never had responses? None of them, not even one. These young people have struggled with education and jobs, but they've formed a campaign group called The Recruitables. They say more needs to be done to understand the pressures they face. I'm autistic. Um, I wasn't diagnosed until I was in year 11, which meant that um, I wasn't offered the early intervention support, which would have really helped my educational journey. Um, this caused me problems in college, in university, in school. Young people feel, and I feel, like we are just statistics for you know the people who actually have the power to make a change. We d I don't feel like somebody who matters to them. Here in Blackpool, one of the answers is identifying those at risk of dropping out early. At Aspire Academy, engagement coach Tamika spends the day bringing pupils into school and making sure they stay there. For Kian, having a personal coach has changed his entire outlook. From year seven to year ten, I was probably in like once a month, two times a month. College applications, how are they going? Pretty well. It's helped me realise what I want to do in my future and it's also helped me to get the qualifications that I need and also get a job. The government says it will guarantee better access to training, apprenticeships and back to work support for young people. So this place really has changed your life? Yeah, literally has. And there's always time where you can make a difference yeah. even if you struggle. Organisations like The Warren want to see change and say there have been too many missed opportunities to help a generation who feel lost. Elaine Dunkley. BBC News. Well, we're joined now by Barry Fletcher from the Youth Futures Foundation and Paul O'Neill from the charity Right to Succeed. Morning, both. Morning, and um, Barry, it's probably helpful, described sometimes as neat, to actually put sort of faces and stories to that phrase, because I know it's not one that you love. So give us a bit more detail about the kind of young people we're talking about here. Yeah, so at the moment we've got a really large number of young people who are out of work or education. Uh, we're generally talking about young people between 16 and 24. So generally left kind of full-time education and then not necessarily found their path into work. Um, unfortunately, quite a few of those young people have certain challenges. So mental health especially is a really growing issue uh, for many of those young people. Um, so it's a, you know, a real challenge. Many of those haven't been able to find their path. They haven't found a job and you know, they're finding it really challenging. Because you are obliged 
to stay in some kind of educational training until the age of 18. So what's happening here? How are they falling through the net? So, yeah, unfortunately, we are seeing uh, a smaller number of that total who are uh, not making that opportunity at 16 and maybe leaving school, maybe going, say, to college, but then mm. dropping out of that right. and then not finding their path back in. So uh, it tends to be those young people who've maybe finished their GCSEs, maybe struggled uh, at that time, uh, and then necessarily haven't found a path back. Presumably, in amongst this group, and we saw some of them a moment ago, there's got to be a lot of talent there. The, the notion that, that somehow they're written off at such an early age and not given opportunities is shocking. Yes, there's a, you're definitely right that there's a huge amount of talent in those young people, and I think because often they're not seen to be going down the conventional route of achieving academically within a mainstream setting sometimes, we tend to overlook the actual talents and assets that they have got and instead focus on some of the deficits that, that might surround some of those young people. And I think it's really important, and our experience at Right to Succeed has been that the experience of these young people is invaluable in actually co-designing services that will ensure that less young people become neat in the future. Do you think that there is a, a widespread thought process about people who fit into that category or are put in that category that somehow they're wasters, that they're they're maybe sponging off the system, they're taking advantage of benefits. Do you think there's a perception that clouds help that might be offered? I think, I think some, some people could see that. Um, the term neat first came into, into play, I think it was in the late 1990s, so it's a quarter of a century now, and at a system level, we haven't solved this issue. So to put that responsibility at the young person's door and think that all of those young people during that period of time haven't been capable of making the transition effectively to employment or, or further education. I think, I think we're missing something. I think we need to look at a system level, what we could do better. Yes, we need to develop the agency and capability of young people and their resilience and their ability to transition effectively. But also we need to look at the systems and structures that are actually exacerbating some of the issues that young people face. What is wrong with our apprenticeship system at the moment then, that it's not filling in those gaps? Yeah, so apprenticeships are an amazing opportunity for young people to get on in life. Um, but at the moment, we've seen about a 40% drop of under-19s who've been doing apprenticeships over this last sort of, seven, eight years since the apprenticeship levy came in. Um, and what we've seen with the apprenticeship system is probably uh, an increase in the number of older workers doing apprenticeships. And it's not that that's necessarily bad. It's just that actually what that's meaning is we're seeing less young people doing apprenticeships. Mm. Um, so I think we really need to see a change in that system to prioritise young people and especially prioritise those young people who uh, need that opportunity to you know, earn and learn, which is a great way to do that. I don't know which of you could share stories. I think it's quite important, isn't it, to concentrate on success stories, to prove that you don't have to get stuck in a place, that it can change. Are there stories, without the names, obviously, that you can sort of give us a sense of about you know, people who have progressed, who've come from one place and got to another? Yeah, there's, there's a number of fantastic stories that we won't be able to have time to go through uh, today, but our Pathways for All programme in Blackpool that focuses specifically on that post-16 transition for the most vulnerable learners. Um, there's been an 88% success rate in young people. So that means that someone's come to you within that age, within that age group who are, who are not in education, not working, just don't have a th anything going on, and that's, that's become something. You actually got them to an entirely different position. Yeah, so we'd, we'd work systematically with the schools or the alternative provision providers or the pupil referral units to identify the young people that could benefit from further support. And then they would have an engagement coach who would work closely with that young person around mentoring, coaching, taking them on work experience, looking at what apprenticeships are on offer, and then supporting them from the last six months of year 11 through the first six months of year 12, because what we know from research is actually that first six months post-transition from schools post-16 is a time when a lot of vulnerable learners drop out and then, unfortunately, they aren't picked up quick enough. The longer they're out of formal education or employment, the more difficult it is for them to get back in. I know this is a huge subject to get into. We don't really have time, but you mentioned mental health, and that is such an important factor these days. The number of young people you spoke to who identify it as being a problem and a barrier for them to getting into some kind of work or training or education. Why is that the case? And, and what can be done to help better support people? Yeah, it's a massive issue. We've seen over the last decade a doubling in the number of young people who are out of work because of mental health issues. Uh, we've seen that obviously grow uh, you know, significantly over that period of time. I think in terms of what we can do, we need to provide more support, especially early intervention, because anxiety and depression, which are the majority of those issues, generally start quite early. So onset of anxiety, average age is 11. 
And actually, we can't wait till someone is, say, 18 to start intervening. So we need early intervention. We need prevention. And we just see it as a massive problem. I just want to know why. Why this is happening to our children at this point. In yeah, I think it's really complex. You know, yeah. there's been lots of different theories as to why that's happening. We're doing some research at the moment looking at trying to understand that better mm. because I don't think it is completely clear. Of course, lots of people highlight things like social media, etc. And I'm sure that's part of the, the issue. But I think it's much wider than mm. that. Um, and we need to think about it in that way. Uh, what are you going to say? Yeah, I think one of the issues is um, you're not neat until you are. And when you are neat, at that point, there's already been a narrowing of your opportunities in terms of reaching your full potential. So actually presenting mental health issues at that point, they could have been identified much earlier and are more likely to be a complex and cumulative um, issue that involves a lot of other things, maybe around things like school attendance or being in the care system or being a young carer. There's, there's lots of other elements that go into that that we then see the presenting mental health issues that we've got at the moment. Well, it's a complex challenge and a big one, but you're, you're both doing excellent work to try and meet that. Thank you very much for coming in and Thank talking you. to us, Paul and Barry. Thank, Thank you. you.